doesn't matter if you're a beginner cyclist or if you've been cycling years. There's one massive mistake that every single human being has made, and indeed many continue to make. A mistake so big that if you let it, it will not only take away all of your enjoyment of cycling, but also potentially ruin your life in general. So, this big mistake is da -da -da, worrying about what other people think. Yep, I know, it sounds simple, but worrying about what other people think may have a far greater impact on your cycling than you first think. If you are thinking of starting cycling, it can prevent you from getting on the bike in the first place. And you find yourself thinking things like, I'm too old, I'm too fat, I'll just look stupid, yada yada yada, and then before you know it, you've abandoned all thoughts of getting on a bike and instead you've decided to join the local choir. And what a wasted opportunity that would be, all because you were worried about what people would think when they saw you riding a bike. But here's the thing, generally speaking, most people, and by that I mean people that don't ride bikes, simply don't care what you look like. For them, they have far too much going on in their lives to worry about what somebody looks like on a bike that's going to whiz past them for three nanoseconds. Okay, there might be somebody somewhere who will form some kind of negative opinion, but just try and imagine how sad and empty their lives must be. Are you really going to let somebody like that spoil your cycling? Take a look at me. I'm about as far as you can possibly get from a chiseled cycling Adonis. And do I worry about what other people think? Well, I'll be honest and say occasionally I do. But do I let it spoil my cycling? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, at the moment, there does seem to be a lot of anti-cyclist propaganda in the media. For the most part though, it is the tabloid press trying to whip up friction between motorists and cyclists, painting us as arrogant, entitled road users that don't really deserve any respect. Sadly, this is nothing more than cheap tactics designed to sell more newspapers. But the damage comes when the motorists start to believe this friction. That said, instead of worrying about it, it's probably better to be mindful of what these motorists may be thinking. The reality is that most motorists are decent people, and the last thing they want to do is drive in such a way that puts somebody in deliberate danger. But then mistakes do happen on both sides. If you are the one at fault, take responsibility for it, even if it's just to yourself. And if the motorist is the one at fault, don't get involved in some kind of road rage incident because they never end well. You may well have the moral high ground, but all anyone will ever see is a lycra clad weirdo going all red in the face while they argue the toss. But let's say you just don't care what Joe Public thinks. The next group of people that you probably want to find favour with is cyclists themselves. After all, they all ride the latest and greatest, most expensive bike, they wear uber fashionable cycling kit and they're all super fit and ride really fast. What on earth are they going to think when you turn up on your Halford special and you plod along on the Sunday club run? Yeah, again, I'm not going to lie. There are some cyclists that are exactly like that. And to be brutally honest, they probably won't want to ride with you all that often. But does that mean they're looking down on you or judging you? Well, some might, but in my experience, most other cyclists just see a fellow rider and end up being very encouraging and very supportive. What's most likely going to happen is that you'll find a group of like-minded riders riding similar bikes at a similar speed and you'll end up just becoming one of the gang.
more often than not, worrying about what other people think is just an incredibly self-destructive waste of your own time and energy. Not only do you have to try and correctly second guess what's going on in somebody else's head, but you're also setting yourself up with a load of stress and pain that you just don't need. It's going to be much better to focus on what you do want, stop listening to the internal voices, and then just get on with it and have some fun. At the end of the day, it's not really other people that are the problem. It's your own doubts and fears. And if you want to learn how to stop listening to those once and for all, then click on the video just here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.